Okay, so this is the GameCube that I want to use for this project. And I picked this one specifically because it is a Revision C motherboard, or a DOL uh, 101, I believe. That's what they're called. Yeah, DOL 101. So this model uh, was the Revision GameCube, and they removed the digital port, and they removed, um, removed a couple things. They removed serial port 2. But uh, I wanted to use this version because uh, it has an integrated power supply into the motherboard. The Revision A and B motherboard GameCubes have a separate power board, um, and it just takes up more space. So for making a mini console, this one's going to be perfect. Uh, I'm not sure what I want to do with the controllers yet, or this front panel here, because I don't necessarily need the slot A and slot B sticking out the front here. I don't really like care for having the memory cards in the front. I would be totally cool with relocating the memory card to the back. Uh, however, the port, the memory cards, is is on the, the board, the motherboard. Um, so I don't really have much of a choice other than putting it in the front unless I wanted to desolder those ports and then relocate them, which may be too much work. I'm not sure yet. But that's the idea, for memory cards at least. Um, and then this I'm just gonna redesign the front panel for uh, because I just eh, don't need to, I don't, I don't wanna really keep any of the outer shell to be honest with you. Um, I kinda wanna do everything myself. So I don't really wanna reuse any plastics. Um, and we're also gonna say goodbye to the DVD drive and that's gonna be the majority of our space saving. You can just see it right here. Like we're gonna be able to get rid of pretty much all of this and we're gonna be able to get rid of pretty much all of this. So we should be left with a fairly small unit. I think the biggest um, things that are gonna be left to take care of is going to be the fan and the, um, the front ports. But it should be quite a lot slimmer than the original unit. That's the goal. It should be 100% 3D printed. So that's the general idea. Um, yeah, I'll have to figure out what to do with the fan. I might just ditch this fan altogether and just use like a blower style one off a laptop or something. Um, I'm not sure yet. And then around the back, there's just the single AV out. And this, this is on its own little like plastic thing, so this can get totally relocated. But yeah, so it's really a super simple console, so it shouldn't be that hard to do. All right, so I've got the board out. And the idea now is that I'm gonna go ahead and remove both of these ports. Um, it's like the serial port and the broadband port uh, for the, um, the what you call it, the Ethernet adapter and the Game Boy player. Uh, I don't have or use any of those or either of those things, so they're not really important to me. And they add a lot of width. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try and desolder them because they are not necessary for this. All right, we have successfully dremeled off that connector, the one next to the video out. I honestly don't know which one it is. But uh, yeah, it actually came out kind of clean. Desoldering was definitely not going to happen. There's way too many um, pins there. All right, let's see. Oh, oh, I think it's running actually. Ooh. Oh, if it's on, then it, it did not boot. Uh-oh. False alarm, it booted just fine. This error actually doesn't matter. It's just throwing that error because we don't have a disk drive connected right now. So yeah, it's fine. Okay, that one didn't come out quite as clean, but you know what, it got the job done. So we'll go ahead and test it out one more time. And look at that, we are still good to go. Sweet. All right, so now that we've got the board significantly trimmed down, um, it's it real short. <laughs> Here, let me measure this. From the uh, heat sink, which is the tallest component right now. Um, there we go, close enough. That's like 21, 22, 23 millimeters. That's tiny. I mean, obviously the final version is gonna be bigger than that because we still gotta put uh, the fan somewhere and we gotta put the controller inputs somewhere. Um, so it is still gonna be a little bigger. But that's pretty damn small, so. Good, uh, good start to work with here. Some things I'm gonna have to think about are cooling, obviously. Um, I'll just have an air intake, I'm sure, just like some holes on the side, and then have like the fan right here. 
um, just so it can act like a duct and just pull air all the way through it. Um, I definitely don't want to have the fan sitting here like it did before. It's just going to add a lot of height, um, which I don't want. Um, but I'll figure it out. Okay, so I went digging through my parts bin, and I've actually got this fan um, off of God knows what. Uh, that's a Dell part number. <laughs> so off of a Dell something, probably just like a small form factor computer. Um, and I think it's actually going to work perfect. Now, it looks like it's just huge. Like, it's just way too big. Like, we could totally go slimmer. But I got to thinking about it, and I'm like, well, we still have to incorporate this board, no matter what. And like, yeah, this could get trimmed down. Like there's a little excess PCB in the bottom, but that's like a little more than I'm willing to do for this, honestly. Uh, Cause I don't really want to uh, relocate all of these traces. Um, and there's a good amount of them and I don't really feel like doing that. So I'm just going to keep this board as it is. Uh, and it's going to basically just go right there. I don't really have a better place for it. So when you look at it that way, it's kind of perfect. Okay, change of plans. I think I'm going to take this uh, controller PCB and I think I'm gonna make a cut like right through here and then I'll have to relocate the LED the battery and the reset switch um, I, I was putting together the CAD model for it and it was gonna be about 60 millimeters which is still quite a bit off the top of the original GameCube but I kind of want it to be smaller than that and um, that also means I'm not gonna be able to use the fan I wanted to use um, this blower one right here. I know I got all excited about it, but I don't know. I'd rather the whole thing be slimmer. Um, so I think I'll be able to get away with using the original fan and kind of doing the same thing I was doing with this, where it just, it's going to sit on top of the heatsink um, and pull air through the heatsink. I think it should still work using the stock fan and it'll let me be a lot thinner with it. All right, so I'm in the middle of mocking up everything in CAD. And I've got some stuff done here. You can see the heat sink on the uh, circuit board or the motherboard for GameCube. And then I just blocked out some basic shapes for the uh, ports. The memory card slots right there. And then that's gonna be the AV port right there. And then just a basic uh, shell for now. Uh, this yellow piece right here is going to be to hold the controller port PCB that I trimmed onto the memory card slots. And I actually printed it out already. So you can see right here, there it is, attached. There's the 3D printed part. It just screws uh, directly into the memory card slots. There's already two holes there that were used to mount these little, um, uh, just like metal, metal bracket thingies. Uh, <laughs> but we don't need them no more. And so I actually just mounted them backwards. I just put the screw heads through the bottom and then it just, um, the threads just bite right into the plastic of the 3D printer. So yeah, that seems to work out really nice. Really, really nice and slim. And we can actually compare oh, some of the size here. And we have saved quite a bit of room already, which is cool. Yeah, we've saved a little room. We shaved off maybe three millimeters. <laughs> but anyway, it's a good start. All right, my Raspberry Pi Pico has shown up in the mail. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that all wired up to the GameCube board here so we can uh, run without the DVD drive. All right, just finished installing the Pico boot. I've got this plastic lid here just to um, keep it from shorting out with the board. Um, but this is a Rev-C board, which means, oops, we get no SP2 port. So we have to use an SD Gecko here. All right, let's try it out. First boot, let's hope it works. Hey, that's what we like to see. Nice, first try. Okay, change of plans number three. I know I said I was going to use this stock fan, but then I had an even better idea. Hell yeah, Noctua cooler. <laughs> All right, I've got the case mostly printed out here, the shell of it, I mean, um, and it's looking really, really nice, honestly. Um, and it's going to be a quick jump cut for you guys to go from what we've been doing to here, but trust me, this has been hours and hours of work in CAD. And here's the, uh, the back side, and I'm the, well, the bottom situation's a, kind of a thing, because the screws just kind of stick out there. Um, 
but I'll probably end up making some feet out of TPU at some point. I might just make uh, just little tiny strips of TPU that just run along the sides here uh, to keep those from scratching up the surface that you put it on. It's coming together really nice. You can see the uh, fan intakes there. And then the Noxo fan is going to sit a little bit crooked right in there. And the reason it's going to be crooked is because it barely does not want to be centered if I put it head on. It's kind of hard to tell in the video, but you might be able to see that this space right here from here to here is shorter than here to here. And it's not by much, it's by like two millimeters, but I'd rather the fan be centered. So when I do the lid, uh, I'm gonna have the mounting points. This is gonna be mounted to the lid and I'm gonna have it slightly skewed like that because that way I can actually get the circular part of the fan completely centered. So that'll be like that. But, uh, and like the ports, they work really good. And I printed the faceplate um, with a different piece. So this, uh, the faceplate was printed um, from top to bottom like that, just like the shell was. But now you take this and you orient it differently so that the surface finish is that of the top of a 3D print rather than the side. So it kind of gives off a more distinct look for the front panel, just like how the GameCube had a different front panel finish. And memory cards go in just like that. They go in fantastic. They don't feel uh, bad at all. It feels perfect. So yeah, and then the controllers obviously, or obviously, sorry, Jesus Christ. Gonna go right there. Uh, Pico boot is installed. I don't know if I covered that already, but that is just mounted right there in its own little uh, adapter housing thing that I have 3D printed. It originally was just the piece that holds the controller um, PCB to the motherboard but uh, I added a little uh, mounting spot on it right here to mount the Pico boot chip. And yeah, so we're almost done. Honestly, I really gotta do the top uh, cover and then get the fan mounted in there. And then obviously I'm gonna have to wire up a custom solution for this fan. If I ran this at 12 volts, it would be really freaking loud uh, and it would be running really fast. So I don't really want to do that. The point of using a fan like this is for it to be quiet, so. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find a voltage that it's happy with. Um, I imagine I'll probably end up going with five volts, um, but I'm gonna see if it'll run on 3.3 because then it would be really quiet. And I highly doubt the GameCube needs more than 3.3 um, volts on that fan worth of cooling because the original fan, as you can see right here, was not much to uh, write home about. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think this fan will do really well even at a low RPM. So it should be fine. Um, and then I got the power button all mounted up right here on its own custom little uh, bracket there that mounts to the shell. And yeah, everything is going really good. But yeah, it's been hours of freaking CAD work here. The Like designing the shell was not that hard to begin with, but making it super accurate was the really hard part. Taking measurements and comparing it to, um, I'll actually show you here, comparing it to photos that I took um, to make sure it's accurate. You can kind of see, I'll turn these on and off. You can see, like, these are actual photos that I lined up um, just to make sure I got everything accurate, the holes and all that. And then printing it out and then making tiny little adjustments because 3D printers aren't perfect. And hours and hours and hours later, we finally have something usable. All right, and here it is all put together. It looks fantastic. Sorry, the lighting's a little funky because of the way this uh, light is set up. But I think it looks great. It's so slim. There's the top of it, got the fan mounted, got the uh, Tendo GameCube logo going on right here. Came out a little funny, but it's fine. Um, and then here's the reset button. It's um, a little odd. <laughs> I was going to try and mount an actual button here, but um, decided it was going to be way simpler to just use the lever of the switch itself as the button. And there's this little recessed area here, just so it's easier to press and you just slide it forward. That is the reset button. So that actually that actually works really well. Like it actually feels really good to you. So there's that. Here's the power button right here, which has actually been a ginormous pain in the ass to get just right because it won't pop up all the way uh, sometimes. And there's the fan. 
Got the vents. And then I'm, I actually straightened out these lines in the model. Uh, so if I ever make another shell for a different color or whatever, then these will be straight. But for now, they're still slanted. There's the back. There's that side. And then I've 3D printed some feet out of TPU. So there's those. And just glued them on because uh, the screws kind of stick through, unfortunately, and I couldn't make them any shorter without losing, um, you know, grip on them. And I didn't want to make the whole console any thicker, so feet were a good solution. But uh, there it is. Now let's go ahead and uh, power it on. All right, I've got the power cable and the video cable plugged in. Here's the SD Gecko to load the games off of. And then here's a controller. And here we go. So the power LED is actually right in there. It's kind of hard to see. You don't really, uh, let me turn it off again. You don't even really notice it. It just looks like a little bit of 3D printed defect shit. But that's just a one layer thick hole is all that is. So yeah, it shines pretty well. All right, so now let's see. There we are, we're in Swiss. You gotta hold down B, obviously, because there's no DVD drive. I'm like super happy that this is just kind of working. Anyway, there it is, it's running. And I wanted to compare it to a real GameCube, hold on. All right, there it is right next to an actual GameCube. So as you can see, it is pretty slim compared to the original. And in this dimension, it's about the same. Maybe a tiny bit shorter. So it's a good bit less wide as well, which is nice. But yeah, seems to run really good. Um, I don't think it's overheating, which is good, because in Swiss it gives you a temperature readout, but I've heard that that temperature readout is kind of um, not very accurate. But I don't know, I left it on for a while, and it's still going. Just been uh, sitting there playing Mario Kart Double Dash intro. So um, yeah, seems like it's running really well. I'm really happy with it. Um, I think it turned out great. If you liked the video, go ahead and uh, give it a like. If you want to see more weird GameCube stuff or gaming stuff in general, go ahead and subscribe. <clears throat> I don't post very often. Um, I used to stream a little more often, but not really uh, doing that much nowadays. But yeah, if you want to see some weird shit, I guess, go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> I don't know. Up to you. If you hate the video, dislike it. No one else is going to get to see it anyway. Thanks, YouTube. Anyway, I'm out.